So this week's project, we're gonna do a beetle or a botanical print. So we have a few different examples for you to look at. Basic idea is we're gonna use the same step process we did last week where you're going to start with a drawing. You're gonna lay down a lighter value and then we're gonna add medium values and then darker values and a little bit of dry brush for the details. So I have a drawing, very light sketch of my beetle here. There's one twist that you can choose to do. It's up to you. If you would like to add pen, it needs to be a very thin pen and it needs to be a waterproof pen. So if you have a basic Sharpie, that'll work. Make sure that it is the ultra fine one though. This one here, the kind of basic Sharpie, this is gonna be way too thick. If you happen to have something like a drawing pen, like a technical drawing pen, that's a really thin line, um, or even one of the Sharpie um, pens, like writing pens, those will be even better. You do not need to, but if you would like to, you can have a little bit of outline on this project. For once, you get to outline. And you can see how I added a little bit of some details, you know, like some speckles and a little bit of hatch marks. You're not gonna overdo it with the pen. The pen should be minimal and kind of a secondary thing. So right now it's just pencil. You do not have to use pen. First thing I need to do is figure out my bottom layers. I think I'm gonna start with a light yellow. So one thing you notice when you look at the examples of your botanical illustrations or your beetles, you may be needing to add some extra color to it because remember, we're not just gonna do browns and greens. So say this beetle right here, I'm not just gonna do yellow and brown right here. I'm gonna add in, you know, maybe some blue or some purple or something like that. I could mix up kind of a lighter red that's almost like a pinkish red. Any of those sorts of things, I can do purples and you gotta get a little creative with your colors and interpret the colors a little bit differently. You can see there's red, there's green, there's kind of a rusty kind of color. There's all sorts of colors you can use. So if you're using a beetle, try and remember that even if you choose a beetle like this, you're not just gonna use green and be done. You have to use this, you have to interpret colors, same thing we do with the tree. What other colors can you add to this to make it more interesting and add some depth? Same thing here, if this is my botanical illustration, I need to add some purples or some blues or something a little bit more interesting. I'm not just gonna leave it straight green. Because remember, we are making a painting inspired by a botanical drawing or a beetle. First steps, same as before. I suggest using your bigger brush. You do have this brush, and you're more than welcome to use this to get the whole area wet, but obviously I'm not gonna be able to control this in these small little areas. If I want to use this for water, but remember when wet on wet happens, if I take my brush with water and I'm kind of sloppy about this, then when I put paint down, it's gonna spread past where I want it to be. So part of this is you need to work on really good brush control. Get my beetle a little bit wet here. So if I choose to use this, some of you may, depending on what you're drawing. If I choose to use this, I can definitely do it here and get real careful on the edge. So I'm gonna slow down on the edge, but that's for sure gonna help this go a little bit quicker because I do need to paint before it gets dry. Now I need to switch to my even smaller brush. As I'm doing these smaller um, legs and arms, it's okay if I'm not getting every single little bit. And even if I hit just parts here and there down here and kind of dot it on, it'll be okay. So some of you haven't used these palettes before and I neglected to warn you about it before. These, now that they're dry, they came to you kind of semi-wet. I need to dampen my brush and go over the paint. So now I'm getting, I'm getting my paint right here. You should transfer it to another lid or the center part to dilute it. So I'm gonna grab the paint from here. If you just add a ton of water right here, all your paint will dilute and you won't have any of that concentrated original form and you're just gonna waste your paint. So be careful, get a damp brush, go over it, grab your paint and then bring it over here. And then I can dilute as much as I need to from here. 
If there's any areas I want to keep white, I'm going to avoid them. My bottom layer, I'm actually not looking for it to be uniform. I want some areas to be lighter, some areas to be darker. So if I have some parts that have just a hint of yellow like this, and parts of it are still uh, white, that's totally fine. If I have some areas that I go back with the full concentrated yellow, and I drop that in, similar to how we do with the tree, that's good. I want some areas to be darker, some to be lighter. So as I move this around, I'm not looking for one uniform area of yellow. I'm dropping in different concentrations of the paint. As I do this, I can also start thinking of where is going to be the highlight, where is going to be the shadow. If this is evenly lit, I'm going to have some shadow around the edges for sure. I'm definitely going to have some shadow on this in-between part, the different parts of its um, like exoskeleton or whatever it's called. So I can, you know, put in a little bit more of the yellow here, but I'm going to go through that with another color anyways. But really, I am just looking for my first layer of paint, and I want to have, you know, some different variety like it shows right here. You can see on the bottom part, it's got dark, it's got light, it's got some almost white. And that's what I'm really looking for, is that movement. So now that I have that first initial layer of yellow, I am going to drop in a second color to add more variety and more movement. Um, I think I'm going to go to my Burnt Sienna. It's kind of an orangey brown as I work with my palette here. Get a damp brush, doesn't have too much water on it. And you can see how now I'm grabbing this paint. If you found out that as you were working, the paper's actually dried a little bit. Remember, if you look at it from the side, um, you know, it's not kind of hard to <laughs> show you this, but if I look at it from the side, I'm gonna be able to see how um, wet it is. Right now, it's pretty dry. So remember, if I want to get a little bit more of that wet on wet feel and I want to blend a little bit more, I can dampen this a little bit. It will move my yellow around. So I'm kind of just almost like spraying it or splattering it a little bit so it's unevenly wet. So now as I come in here, I'm going to get a little bit more of that spread. So you can see this is actually a pretty dark value that uh, color of burnt sienna that I'm using, I can easily add more water and lighten that. So if I feel like I went too far and that's too dark and I don't want it that dark, I can definitely grab a paper towel. I can come in with a little bit of a damp brush and, you know, move that around. I'm going to drop in a little bit more of this burnt sienna. I'm kind of thinking of the form. You can see how I've automatically started working my edges a little bit darker to start getting that rounding. The other thing that I should be thinking about is the actual shape because in my initial drawing, the bottom of the beetle has a little bit of um, this kind of thing going on for those two edges. But I'm planning to go through and do a little bit of pen on top of this. So you can create the shape with the paint and you can always reinforce it later. So I want a little bit of those runs. I do want that movement where they're just kind of freeform going. And then I'm kind of reinforcing my edges a little bit darker because it's definitely going to be rounding from there. I'm going to add a little bit more of my burnt sienna. I'm going to work this a little bit and I'll be back. One good tip is to always have a space to dilute your color. You can see right here, I'm starting to add a little bit of, you know, some layers of value. And right here, you can see that's just a very, very diluted bit of paint. It's just a shade darker than the yellow right here. So I start going through here. I can make some very, very subtle shifts. Uh, this burnt sienna is a nice color to be able to do that. So I'm adding just a touch. 
And because this is so light, it's okay if this ends up on a highlight side, if it ends up on a darker side, because the reality is I'm still coming through with like a darker color. I'm gonna come through with a purple or a blue or something anyways. This burnt sienna can actually be a pretty good dark value as well. So now that I have a little bit of a beginning, you can see it's a good idea. If you're working really close, sometimes it gives you one idea. But if I zoom back out, look at your whole painting and look for, um, you don't want it to be symmetrical, but you want balance. So this really dark value right here, really dark value right there. It's a little bit unbalanced. I can take care of that a little bit now but I can also balance it out when I get to my darker values. If this really dark value, if I lift it like this, then there just isn't enough dark value elsewhere to balance it out. So at that point, maybe I would want a little bit more of a dark value, maybe up there. And then that bit over there is gonna balance out over here. Maybe I need to do the same thing over on this side. Draw attention there. Maybe I need a little bit more of it on this side. So now when I look at it, there's more places that have that dark value. So it doesn't have to be symmetrical. It doesn't have to be 100% balanced. But you're gonna notice if areas just look wrong. <laughs> Once it's on the page, it's easy to see, easier to see what you need to fix. I'm gonna touch this up a little bit. We're still doing the process. So you're gonna let it dry, and then we'll move on to the next part. One thing real quickly, these papers, like we said, they are glued down on the edges, only on two edges. So because the two edges are free, don't be surprised when you put a lot of water like I did to start with, you may start seeing the paper buckle a little bit. And right here, it's kind of wavy, so it's actually going like that. Uh, don't worry, just let it be. Most of the time, once it dries, it'll dry flat again. So we do have to kind of work a little bit with the limitations since we're not stretching paper and you're using these watercolor pads. So just be aware, this is gonna happen a little bit if you really dampen your paper a lot. So it's okay to do that, but just understand that that happens and also understand that if you just like were to pour water and make it really sopping wet, then you would end up with a little bit of that rippling. Part of this is to show you what happens. We're gonna let it dry and then come back and then I'll kind of show you how the paper looks once it's dry.